Hello and welcome to episode 2 of The World of Bladefoot. In this episode, I will be discussing the great predators that feature in the book Bladefoot. No other hunter strikes fear into the hearts of victims than Tyrannosaurus rex. The T-Rex was 39 feet long, with females being larger than the males, and were more like ambush hunters, hiding amongst the trees waiting for suitable prey. Tyrannosaurus rex then killed the animal with a single bite from its bone-crushing jaws and banana-sized teeth that acted like railroad spikes for piercing and mashing. T-Rexes were also equipped with keen sensors. It had the biggest olfactory bulb of all time, the part of the brain dedicated to the sense of smell, perfect for sniffing out prey or rotting carcasses. Its eyes were the size of cricket balls, and just like a modern eagle, T-Rexes had binocular vision, which wasn't based on movement. Its serrated teeth were the perfect breeding ground for bacteria, giving T-Rexes a poison bite, and just like a python, it could dislocate its bottom jaws to swallow meat, bone, and sinew. The massive mouth of the T-Rex contained up to 58 serrated teeth. These were different sizes, but the longest were 15 centimetres long. Those at the front of the jaws were more closely packed in than those towards the back. Despite being fearsome predators, T-Rexes were also caring parents, with both parents taking care of their young, feeding and protecting their infants until they were big enough to fend for themselves. To attract a mate, the smaller male T-Rex would need to find prey, either dead or alive, to present it to the larger female. T-Rexes were cannibals, so they didn't want to end up as lunch for the female. As far as intelligence goes, T-Rexes had the IQ of a modern house cat. A smaller relative of the T-Rex was the Nanotyrannus. This 16 feet long Tyrannosaur is very controversial because some paleontologists believe it to be a juvenile T-Rex. However, recent research has shown by key differences in the skull and tooth structure, so it is argued that Nanotyrannus is its own species. The Nanotyrannus, whose name, by the way, means dwarf tyrant, was a pack-hunting scavenger of the firm prairies, working in groups to bring down larger, well-armed herbivores such as Taurosaurus. Pack life was dictated by the will of the strong. However, death didn't just come from the land, but also from the sky in the form of Quetzalcoatlus. The meaning of the name Quetzalcoatlus is from Quetzalcoatl, the plumed serpent of Aztec mythology. This giant pterodactyl, or pterosaur to the layperson, had the largest wingspan of all time at 39 feet and an eight and a quarter feet long skull, but only weighed 250 kilograms thanks to a complex system of air sacs inside its bones. Quetzalcoatlus hunted like a modern stork, concealing its giraffe height amongst the trees to, ju- to ambush medium-sized dinosaurs. Like a modern bird of prey, Quetzalcoatlus had binocular vision, which was useful for spotting unattended dinosaur nests on the ground. To take off, Quetzalcoatlus did, ha- did a series of push-ups to spring off the ground to get airborne in, in, a, in, a, fa- in a, a fashion similar to a modern-day vampire bat. Lurking in the river's and swamps was the giant crocodilian Dinosuchus, whose name means terrible crocodile. Growing to 39 feet long, the giant croc was able to ambush dinosaurs from the water and drag them to a watery grave. It, is oft- it could be argued that Dinosau- Dinosuchus was in fact the apex predator of the late Cretaceous period, and has been th- as it has been theorised that it could possibly win a, f- a fight with Tyrannosaurus rex should a Dinosuchus ambush a T-Rex from, from the water's edge. Join me next time for episode 3, where I will show you some herbivorous dinosaurs from the world of Bladefoot.